from Hebrews. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of faith, for the joy set before him he endured, the cross scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from the sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And we turn to Second Timothy 4, 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I ask you to be with Julia this morning as, as she shares your words with us. Guide and direct her in her heart. We know that she is with you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. It was a sunny August morning in 1972 in Traverse City when members of my family saw me off for my first airplane flight, a journey that would take me to the other side of the world, where my husband, an Air Force career man, was waiting for me. My daughter Sharon was 17 months old, and I was six months pregnant with Roger. It seemed we had barely got up in the air when we were landing in Grand Rapids. My stomach went to my toes and my breakfast into the little brown little bag that was there for us. It was years before I could eat an egg for breakfast again. The next stop, Chicago. With a little help, I found the right gate. On to Cincinnati. Take off again. The engine backfires halfway down the runway, a quick stop just a few feet from the grass. Back to the terminal for a long wait. It was quite a job keeping a 17-month-old entertained for two hours in the airport terminal, a challenge to keep her away from the cigarette butts that she had never seen before, but were all over the place. Which Finally, on to Columbus, Georgia, where, of course, we had missed our connecting flight. But we got on the next flight to Savannah, to bed for a short night's sleep at the base motel. Then the next leg of our journey began. First stop on this day, Bermuda. Sunny, sandy beaches, palm trees, which would really, I would really like to stay here but on to the Azores. Decided I would like a cup of coffee in the terminal cafe. So I found a small table for Sharon and I. None of the male waiters would approach us, and they were all male waiters. Finally, a fellow passenger asked if he could sit at our table. I think he must have noticed my plight. The waiter was there as soon as he sat down, and my table mate, who I never saw again, also ordered for me. Next stop, Morocco. I could feel as well as see the stairs. A pregnant woman with a small daughter traveling alone must not have been seen very often. There were times on this journey that I wondered what I was doing and wishing I could turn around and go back to Frankfurt which was in the other direction. But I persevered. There was a goal I wanted to reach, and he was waiting for me when we landed in Tripoli, Libya. I have a little sticky note by my computer, and I don't know where I wrote this down from, but it's been there for several years which says, be by perseverance, the snail reached the ark. 
Many time I look, times I look at this as I try to figure out what's going on with my computer. So often it does things that I didn't tell it to do. <laughs> at least I don't think so. I got my first computer in 1998. It was one of these big square box things with a tower that you put your floppy dish in. I remember my first problem with it. Probably I had had it a couple of years. And I couldn't turn it off. No matter where I clicked what I did, I could not turn that computer off. So I called Bruce, my son, and he says, all you have to do is unplug it. <laughs> so I did that and plugged it back in, and it booted right back up. Do they use that term, booted, anymore? <laughs> but since then, I've had three different laptop computers that my sons and my grandson, Reed, try to keep me up to date. Reed just got me a new one, a new used one, about two weeks ago, and I'm still trying to learn what buttons to push. I did find how to get my email and send email right away, because I used that same little uh, thing on it. And, uh, but I've got a lot to learn. I, try, I googled perseverance to see if I could find anything about, uh, that was said about perseverance. And I found this. Perseverance rover was launched during the COVID pandemic. Last Monday marked two years, five months, and 20 days since it landed on Mars. This was designed to last for three years. Its twin, Curiosity, is still growing strong after almost 11 years of roving. NASA conducted a contest for K through 12 grade students to name the rover as the rover was being built. A seventh grade student in Virginia uh, and submitted the winning name, Perseverance. He wrote in his essay the following. Let me get my glasses up here. I'll try to read without him. He wrote, curiosity, insight, spirit, opportunity. If you think about it, all these names of past rovers to Mars are qualities we possess as humans. We are always curious and seek opportunity. We have the spirit and insight to explore the moon, Mars, and beyond. But if rovers are to be the quality, a lot qualities of us as a race, we miss the most important thing, perseverance. We humans are creatures who could, could adapt to any situation, no matter how harsh. We are a species of explorers, and we will meet many setbacks on the way to Mars. However, we can persevere. We, not as a nation, but as humans will not give up. The human race will always persevere into the future. So how do we pers persevere in our Christian life? For me, it means to continue in prayer and Bible study. Each, each Sunday we hear prayer requests do you go home and pray for them? Aaron usually sends out on Monday a reminder of these prayer requests. And if one comes up through the week, he always sends it. Just this week, remember, we got one from Mary Thompson. And she persevered, and here she is this morning. <laughs> so, um, and Bible reading is very important. I like to use the upper room. There's some out there you can take home. I know a lot of you, you probably do your devotions using your computer. But my, husband, my father was a printer, so I like the printed word. <laughs> if you read through the Bible, there are a lot of people who persevered. Think of Noah and that snail. 
Noah was told by God to build the boat. There was no lake around, there was no river around, and he lived and he built this boat out in the middle of nowhere. And he did the job. He persevered. I um, have a tile that a friend gave me that says, God not only knows where he is taking you, but he ho- also knows how to get you there. I thought that was pretty good. As I was thinking about perseverance, I thought of the many people in this church who has persevered. And two women that were especially uh, meaningful to me, their lives, were Rita Vowinkle and Frances Odell. Rita was diabetic, and as she went on, she had health issues and lost one of her legs, but she kept going. She invited our Bible study group to her house, um, had refreshments for us, prayed for us, loved us, and she baked these wonderful jumbo chocolate chip cookies for our women to sell at their bakes at our bake sale. Well, Rita's health finally declined so that she had to stay in the pavilions. Uh, she had been a district officer for United Methodist Women, and I kind of followed in her steps. And one day, as I was leaving to go to a meeting in Grand Rapids, I stopped at the pavilions to talk to her. And as I went down the hall, they were wheeling her out on the way to the hospital. But they allowed me to take her hand, talk to her, and pray with her. When I left, I didn't know that that would be the last time I saw Rita. But she was a great lady who persevered. Then there was Frances. Uh, She had health problems too. Sometimes her legs would swell to twice their size. But she kept coming when we were fixing our suppers our United Methodist women fixing suppers to raise money for missions. And we always found a job she could do sitting at the table. One of them that she liked was peeling potatoes. When Frances went in the hospital and we knew that she didn't have long to live, I went up to visit her and her family was gathered around there also. And uh, It was a couple of days later that Francis died. Francis' niece called me and said, would you do the eulogy for Francis' funeral? That was one of her requests. I had never done a eulogy before, but I persevered and did it. And I often wondered why Francis asked me to do this because we didn't always agree on things. She, Frances was definitely one who wanted to do things because we always did it that way. I wanted to try and do things once in a while, but sometimes I would give in and sometimes she would give in and we still loved each other. Once I took a trip to India with our conference hunger committee. Um, we visited villages and areas where they were having problems and uh, two men from India went around with us and we were evaluating needs they had and seeing if UMCOR could help with their needs. Outside of Hyderabad, um, there was this group, this Christian group and they had lived in the country but the doubt, doubt was so bad they moved them into the outskirts of Hyderabad. They lived on a hill that, if you've ever been to Frankfurt, is probably as high as from the arch down to the A&W. And then probably from here to Dave Wren's first house, they had to walk to get to the well to get water. Well, down around the well, it was a Hindu community. And the women were often, had thrown, stones thrown at them and were not treated well. But these Christians on top of the hill 
continued in perseverance and witness. Their church was built on the highest point of the hill, and they had a flag on a high pole that had a cross on it. There was no housing when they came there, so they had to build their own houses. They used wood they scavenged, metal, cardboard boxes, and built their houses. And they always painted a cross outside the door. They wanted each of us to enter their houses and see what they had done. And they wanted us to pray for them and pray blessings on their house. What an example of perseverance with this Christian group in India. For me, one of the groups in our church that shows great perseverance is our quilting group. There are women there that come every week. Some of them have health issues, cancer, have lost husbands and loved ones. But they come, and one of the great uh, persons of perseverance for me is Iva. She's the master of the ironing board. (laughs) She presses those blocks so they're smooth and presses these long strips of material that they put in their quills. If it weren't for those pressed, nice strips, the quills wouldn't look as beautiful as they do now. So I'm so thankful for Iva and for others, for Mary sitting in that back pew that every Sunday I come and say hello to her. She reminds me how old she is. But I'm so glad she's there persevering and coming. There are many small ways that the members of our church persevere. I think of the people who count the offering, those of you who bring refreshments for fellowship time, those who greet or say hello to people. There's just so many of you who persevere through the life of our church. Let us picture Paul, the old battle-scarred person who heard of the cross and carried the message to many countries for 30 years. He's in prison and looking up through a small window in his roof, and just a little light shines down on his face, showing the peace of Christ. Paul writes to Timothy, urging him to come quickly because he knew his days were not, he did not have many days left to live. This was the first, or this was the last thing that Paul wrote this letter to Timothy. And he urged Timothy to come. He said, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. When I told my daughter, Sharon, what I was talking about today, she says, well, are you going to tell about your broken leg? (laughs) I said, well, I hadn't planned to, but after she shared a couple things, I decided that maybe I should. It'll be two years in December that I broke my leg, slipping down in that uh, slippery snow. Um, I said broke my leg, I should say shattered my leg. (laughs) Um, I spent two, three weeks in the hospital, a month in the rehab, and then went home to live with Roger. Sharon shared with, shared with me that she wondered, and she knew others wondered, if I'd ever be able to take care of myself again to live in my own house. But after four and a half months, after learning to walk, with one foot in a walker, with one foot and a toe in a walker, and finally with two feet in a walker, I was back, back in my own house. So she said she thought that was my greatest example of perseverance in my life. Maybe it was. Um, so 
several years ago, um, I had a niece and her three children that come to stay with me for um, a couple weeks. She left an abusing husband and was trying to figure out what to do. And uh, I want to go back to after I broke my leg and after my two heart surgeries, I always wondered, what am I going to do now? Can I do anything to help God, to help this church? When my uh, niece was staying with me, her th three-year-old daughter almost, sang almost every day. She sang, God is still working on me. He made, it took God just a week to make the moon and the stars, <coughs> the sun, the earth, Jupiter, and Mars. How loving and patient God must be. God is still working on me. So no matter what happens, remember, you can have perseverance with God helping you. So for our closing song, I asked Ruth if we could sing, Here Am I. God's still calling us. You may not know what he's calling you to do, but he's still working on you, and he'll get you through it.